quick rundown there of uh, Stop Me If You've Heard This One Before by The Smiths, uh, written by Johnny Marr. Um, I recently bumped into this watching a really cool video that Johnny Marr just put out where he has the guys from uh, the YouTube channel That Pedal Show, those two English guys, that have the really cool show where they review, you know, effects and pedals, guitars, right? But mostly effects on their channel and do a really nice job of it. Um, boy, what a coup for them to um, have Johnny Marr, have them come into his studio, his private studio, where Johnny Marr talks for like an hour and a half about his career um, as told through his relationship with certain guitars. So he starts out with that Gretsch Super Axe and then moves on to the Rickenbacker 330 and anyway, it's just really cool. But uh, when he gets to the 61 Gibson 335, he plays Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before and just runs through it quickly and it was so cool, right? Um, that I thought I would break it down and see exactly how he played that little bit on the program. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, and, you know, out of my small collection, the guitar that just sounded best for this was this reissue Gretsch uh, Champagne Sparkle Double Jet. Um, so that's what I'm using today, capoed at the third fret, not the second, which is where Mar typically goes for Smith songs, but this is capo three. Gonna count the frets as usual. Um, I've also got, um, in terms of my own effects, I've got boss effects going here. I'm using uh, uh, some chorus, obviously, uh, some delay, and also reverb um, with a bit of tone modification to try to simulate what it sounds like Johnny Marr was using in the studio that day. Definitely reverb, delay, and chorus. Okay, so we start out this song uh, here in the A shape at the 5th fret. And he, he gets a little bit of kind of this vibe going. So that's kind of the rhythm that we're going for to start out. But he plays this A chord a few times and then he drops in here to the um, G string at the 7th fret with his pinky. the open A string and in this on this chord even that low E open sounds good so once we get to there he quickly rolls into this shape so what he does there is he goes from the A chord to the uh, 5th fret D string 6th fret A string with uh, your pinky still at the 7th on the B string. My bad, you take the pinky off. So we're going to strum up to the G string and then come back, to, oh, pardon me, to the B string. Boy, I'm on one today. Then we're going to play an accent note, D string 7th fret. So here's that run, played slowly. Then he plays what I think are the coolest two chords in the whole thing. It took me a little while to figure these, uh, these chords out. But I think what he's doing is here at the 6th fret, a string, not playing this low E, okay? Sixth fret, A string, eighth fret, D, and B. So notice we double up that note there. Then we're just going to slide it up two frets to the eighth. Then 
he jumps down to this familiar chord shape here. Right? Which, without the capo, down there at the third would be a G. Right into an E. E shape. I guess you could play this one here in the bar. But that's not what he does on the video. He's here kind of doing the Paul Weller handful of strings thing, but may have the thumb off there, but you can add the thumb. And there's your first run through. Now, I find with this chord here, be careful not to pull the strings as you form the chord, unless you go out of tune, right? So you really want to come straight down with this. Okay, now the third time through, he does a variation on this A chord. So, we're here at the A shape. And instead of dropping in with your pinky up here at the 7th, we're just going to come in here at the 6th on the B string. And we're going to roll off like we did before. In this shape here, so I'm at the 6th uh, fret A string, 5th fret D string, and the 6th fret B string. And then we're just going to lift off our ring finger to kind of add an accent flourish there. Then he does a C chord, C shape I should say, and then a lift off there at the B string fourth. And then he jumps into a D shape does it again. Now another way you can do this is start with your finger off and go like this into this C shape and if you want and it sounds really good to do it like this add that low E in the bass right with your C shape but add the low E at the sixth fret and you get this off there, the 4th fret, and then slide it all up too. Now, part 3 of this is we drop into the arpeggiation that Johnny Marr is so famous for. And the chords he arpeggiates is this one that he loves. So here we are at the 4th fret B string, the 6th fret A and D, and the 4th fret low E with the thumb, okay? Okay, so that's one of the arpeggiated chords that he does, and then he juxtaposes it with this one. All we did there was we left our index finger B string 4th fret and we came in with the middle finger D string 5th fret. And you know, to arpeggiate these, um, sometimes I can nail it just like he does it, right? Other times <laughs> I can't, uh, it's just tricky. But what you want to do is just draw out these chords by starting with your low E and then we're just going to pull off that 4th uh, fret B string there 
here is that open D string to end that chord, and then we go into this shape. Something along those lines. So again, we're going from this shape. Right into this one. And I think he doesn't go up to the high E until he's ready to, so he goes something like this. Then we jump back here. So lift off and hammer on. There we went up to the high E string. Did you notice that? Now we play this, this famous intro riff. That uh, sliding up back and forth riff is simply the B string fourth fret, G string fifth fret with an open A, uh, open D. And we're going to slide that up to the sixth and then back to the fourth, same shape. Then we're just going to drop in the ring finger on the B string uh, eighth fret. Back down to the A shape. You can decide how you want to do it from there. So, there you have it. There's the essence of uh, Johnny Marr's real quick run through of Stop Me, if you've heard this one before. Thanks for watching.